Okay, so this is the first instructional video on matter and measurement, and I'm just going to quickly walk you through um, the, an introduction and the scientific method. So really this is going to give you just a brief intro, and then we're going to look at how you can define and apply the scientific method to real world problems. So we're going to start with an introduction and how you can apply chemistry to the world, and we'll move through that next section of the scientific method. Now chemistry is a study of basically everything, everything that has substance. And so really we define that as the science of matter, specifically chemical reactions. But really we're going to deal with atoms and reactions and structure and how everything works together. Um, so really chemistry is the study of everything. Now when we say it's a study of matter, that means it's going to be anything that has mass. Mass is similar to weight. It's just that weight is gravity's pull. Mass is um, independent of gravity. So for example, I'm going to be the same amount of mass whether I'm on Earth or on the Moon, but my weight would change dramatically because of the Moon's less, has less of a gravitational pull. So in addition to anything that has mass, it must also take up space. It can be something incredibly small like an atom, or it could be something exceptionally huge. So matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. When atoms combine together or bond, they form molecules. Eventually, if you have enough molecules in a specific area, you can begin to see them. Now this is really the foundation of chemistry. It's a play between macroscopic and microscopic. We see things that are really large, and we're going to use what we see, the observations that we can make, to really discuss what happens on a microscopic level. So for example, on a microscopic level, water has one oxygen, two hydrogens, with a very specific bond angle. But what we really see macroscopically is the um, glass of water. Now in general, um, oops, we are going to use what we see to help us explain our world. So we're going to take this macroscopic glass of water, for example, to draw information about the molecules that are present. Now because chemistry is a study of everything that has matter and takes up space, it means we can use it for everything. We're going to use it to investigate biology, our bodies, environmental science. We're going to use it to investigate um, fertilizers and drugs and all kinds of different um, things. So you can kind of think of like chemistry as the central science with physics and biology and everything else attached. Um, and I could keep going, but in general. That's where we're at. Now in order to make some kind of conclusion about our world, we have to start with um, what we can see and go through a very systematic process. For us, we're going to call this a scientific method. Now regardless of what field you are in, scientists are going to gather information. It's not enough just to gather information you have to learn how to categorize it. How are we going to use that information? Um, you know, a couple years ago, the government called for millions upon millions of phone records of Verizon customers. That is a lot of information. I can kind of just picture that as file upon file upon file, just burying desks of who knows how many employees. It's not enough to just have the information. You have to know how to use that information to make uh, conclusions. So once you have this information and you've categorized it, you want to continually question what you think you know. You know, um, it's a matter of are you sure? 
How do you know? If you don't do this, you're going to draw a conclusion and never really investigate whether it's the truth. When we get to Unit 7, we'll talk about why, is, why are roses red? Well, roses are red not because they're red. They are the absence of red. And um, if somebody hadn't gone through the process of investigating that, they wouldn't know the truth. Now, all scientists want to follow a very specific process that is going to give a systematic way of going through this information um, uh, gathering. Um, you're missing my, my reference down here, um, but this is the scientific method by Baumless. which is in your text. It's CC by SA 3.0. There should be a link to this on Blackboard. But the main idea here is you start with an observation, something like, oh, let's, let's start with a real world example. Let's say, you want to buy a new phone. Let's go with phones today. Say you make an observation like that new phone is absolutely amazing. I bet I could use that. And so you ask a question. Is that going to be compatible with my plan? You want your hypothesis to really be, you want to try to disprove it. So for example, if you think you can get this phone for your plan, you're going to go through a, a series of steps to try and disprove that. The first thing you would do is probably call your provider and see if they have that phone in stock. That would be your experiment. Okay, and the idea is you take your observation, you use that into a question, and then you try to disprove your question with your experiment. Let's do another. Um, let's do another one. Let's do something much simpler. Say you want to turn on the TV. You pick up the remote. You aim it at the TV. You hit power. Nothing happens. That's your observation. What's your first question? Maybe, do, are the batteries in the remote dead? So you could say your hypothesis would be something like, the batteries in the remote control have gone, have died, I need to replace them. Your prediction would be something along the lines of, if I replace the batteries, the remote will help the TV to come on. So your experiment would be you would walk to wherever you keep the batteries in your house, you change out the batteries, you walk back to your living room, aim it at the TV, and try to turn it on. If it does not come on, you are able to disprove your hypothesis, which means you're going to go back through and basically try again. So maybe it's not the remote control batteries. Maybe it's the TV is unplugged. And so you would say, your hypothesis is, the TV is unplugged. If I were to try and make sure it's plugged in correctly, it will come on. And so you would check that the TV's plug was plugged into the wall securely, and you would try again. Maybe then you would try checking the breaker. The point is, your hypothesis are possible explanations that are easily changed based on results you are always trying to disprove your hypothesis. And you're going to adjust that hypothesis almost instantly based on those results. If you eventually are able to um, get consistent results where your hypothesis cannot be disproven, that hypothesis basically evolves into a theory which is considered more likely to be the correct explanation. Theories hold up much more rigidly, but they are still changeable eventually. Um, 
something like the theory of cold f fusion or something along those lines. It is only after years and years and years and years of intense investigation that a theory becomes um, what is considered the standard truth or a law. There are very few laws in chemistry. One would be the law of gravity. No matter how many times you drop a pen, it is going to always fall to the floor. You could spend your entire life dropping pens and it is always going to fall to the floor. And so mostly a law is considered correct. Theory is considered a very possible explanation. A hypothesis is just a guess. Remember you always want to disprove rather than prove your hypothesis. I want you to kind of consider why that's important um, before you move on. Remember a hypothesis is easily and readily changed. And really this is almost instantly as soon as you check a result. A theory is um, considered a very possible explanation. It is possible to change these, but only with intense investigation and really, really good results. So just as an idea, go ahead and try to consider where you have done something with the scientific method in the last day, whether it was looking for a good parking spot or trying to find your keys, um, something along those lines. Just try to apply this to your real world. And that is the end of this video.